This is exciting. Obviously, people are interested in social selling, a topic that probably five years ago didn't exist. Uh, we were all probably encouraged not to use social media to sell, but obviously, we are here for a reason. We run businesses, and what I'm going to share with you today are some principles that I promise you will work. Sherry mentioned that I operated a landscape business for 20 years. I've actually been in sales my entire career, 10 years in a corporate environment, 20 years operating a brick and mortar business, now operating a digital business, but still the foundational principles are the same. And that's what we're going to learn today. So you're not going to learn a whole lot of social media ninja tricks, but there is one ninja trick that you will learn about the sales process that trips up many businesses, whether they're using social media or not. It's something that when I discovered it and refined it, the floodgates just opened. And suddenly, our closing rate was like 97%, because we had a way in which to give buyers confidence, a way to take them where they want to go, which is to a desired outcome, which is exactly where we wanted to go. But as you well know, it's very frustrating when you get leads, when you engage, and then for some reason things fall apart. I'm gonna help you solve that today and help you use your social media to make that process even better. So before we uh, get into the nitty gritty, I wanna share with you a story about a client that I used to have in my former business. Let's call him Bob. Bob was not just a customer. He was a friend and in many ways a mentor. But there was one thing unusual about Bob and that is he always paid us in cash. I never asked him why, but everybody else sent a check into the business, but Bob paid us in cash. And that created an interesting dynamic because you can't just put cash in the mail, you have to go pick it up. So when I went to Bob's house to pick up the payment, we would have this basically little ritual of sitting down, having coffee, uh, talking about the world in general, and then eventually we'd get around to talking about the project, the landscape project that we had just completed. Maybe we would walk around the house and take a look at things but usually not. However, on this particular day, we did that. So we walked around and I would point this out and hey, what's this, he might ask, and we would just basically discuss it and he would nod and that looks fine, that looks fine. And then we finally got to the front of the house and Bob did something that really changed how I sell. He gave me the money and then he asked a very important question and I want you to really take this question to heart, as I did. He said, what's next? We had just completed the project. I said, what do you mean what's next? We're done. He said, you don't get it, do you? And I said, no, I guess I don't. Help me out. He says, what's next? Take out something that's already existing and put in something better. And it's like just a wave passed over me. I thought, my gosh, you know, I have a relationship with this customer, but in reality, I still saw it as a series of transactions instead of a relationship with a customer. Because he explained to me, he said, look, if you're not going to help me spend my money, I worked with affluent clients, by the way, I'll spend it on a new car, I'll give it away to charity. What he was basically saying is, look, you've guided me along this buyer's journey, you've really helped me out, you've given me a lot of value, but now you're not taking me where I want to go, which is to the next level. And this is something that a salesperson does with a customer, and more important, this is something that your social media accomplishes today. What Bob was really saying was, give me new ideas, tell me what is the next best thing. Maybe I'll buy it, maybe I won't, but if you're not keeping me on the cutting edge to do what I want to do, which is to take this product property, and as he said, make it a show place, something that my family can enjoy, something the neighbors can enjoy, and all my friends can really appreciate, a really beautiful landscape, then I'll have to find somebody else. And so, to tell you the truth, I really asked Bob, would you mind, and he said, sure, I'll come down to your office, I'll share this with your staff, and I'll tell you, everybody, it was so exciting to see their attention level, they, and just hearing from a real live customer what it really means to be a seller and how to give them exactly what they want and to understand that there is always more to do. You're never done selling and when we talk about the sales process, you will see that that's why every sales process that I've worked with is always circular because you're never done. It's always continuous. 
I read an article about Laura sometime last year in Ad Age, and I'll be perfectly honest, I was blown away by what she was doing because she is doing everything <laughs> that I've been teaching for so many years, and we had a great conversation. I said, would you mind being a guest on my podcast? She agreed, and so let me tell you her story. She worked at that time for an automobile dealership, a Toyota dealership in Bozeman, Montana, and she decided to do things differently. First of all, she said to me she was kind of bored with the usual process of waiting for what they call an up, that's somebody to come in off of the lot and walk in, and when it's your turn, you have an opportunity to talk with that person, sell them a car or a truck. What she did instead was she started creating helpful media. She relied predominantly on YouTube creating videos to help people understand more about the products she was selling and how to use them better, how to buy them and how to use them. She did things like talking about how to negotiate a lease, how to get more mileage out of your Prius, things like this. She was making them better buyers. This is exactly what I did in my landscape business when I started it in the 80s. I was using print because that's all we had available at that time, but when I got into that industry after leaving the corporate world, what I discovered was everybody's doing it differently. And I found out if I was confused about jumping into this new industry, maybe the buyers are too. And that's what Laura proved, is people were hungry for this information. Uh, as an example, she did a video on leasing. I've leased cars for as long as I can remember, 20 plus years. I learned a lot in that video. So don't underestimate the knowledge that you have for helping your buyers. And so what she was effectively doing was removing these obstacles and it developed relationships and it got buyers wanting to work exclusively with her. As a result, just to give you some information to quantify this, in her first year, she sold something like 10 vehicles per month. In her second year, it was something like 20. In her third year, it was something like 30. How about that? The most important thing she said to me, though, in that podcast interview was this. I said, you know, what's in the future for Laura? And I don't recall exactly what she said, but she did say this, and I want you to remember this. She said, I do believe in the future that every buyer is going to want to have a relationship with somebody in a business before they will approach that business. And I believe she is 100% true. That is what we are trying to accomplish with our social media. We are trying to help you understand that we have experience and expertise, that we really do want to help you, that we're a trustworthy human being. It, it's all these things, you know, this is about human behavior, and that's why there aren't a lot of statistics here that I can share with you other than what I've shared thus far, because human behavior is kind of fuzzy. But we know for a fact that people buy on emotion, not on logic, right? They'll do their research, and they will get that information, but it's always emotion that is going to drive them to buy because it's, 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 um, it's a transaction of working with somebody that you trust. And if you don't trust somebody, it doesn't matter how good the deal is, you're gonna kinda of sense that that deal may not be right for you. One of the best things about rehearsing this presentation was getting to watch that video over and over again. <laughs> to me, that is one of the best business stories that I know of. So going back to using your stories to sell, uh, the main character is the customer, it's not you. So in this situation, in the video, the dog is the protagonist. And he gets lost. Are your customers lost? Do they need more information to help them out? If you're really listening, if you're really using your social media to listen, you can hear their cries for help and you want them to turn to your business, but you, but you just can't make it like obvious in your stories. So you need an antagonist, which of course in this situation was the wolf that creates some conflict. And of course what happens after that is you, your business, you come to the rescue. You hear their cry for help. You know they need better solutions. You are the Clydesdales. You take them down a path, you guide them, to the place where they want to go, to a safe place, a place that they know is home. That's working with your business. That's using social media to sell. The template is this. 
um, you have a way, especially if you are the founder of that business, that you got customers and made them happy and brought in more customers. So find out what that is and, and look for the patterns, look for things, and I, I, this is what I promise you, is you have probably uh, taken things out that used to work and gotten rid of them, as we did with that landscape business. We used to subcontract work, and we stopped doing that because we couldn't control the quality. As a result, our fixed costs, our, our overhead went up, and so we said, well, hey, we're a lot smarter now, let's start using subcontractors again. But basically, look for the patterns, go through your 10 to 20 most successful projects, and say, how did we do this, and why, that was a big question we asked today, why did it work out so well? And then put a name to it, and sell that possibility of this thing that doesn't yet exist, and it, it's, it will, you will just explode your business, I promise you. Okay, this is the end game. This is exciting, I think. This is what changed my business. You sell the process, not the products. Everybody's selling products. That's the commoditization of every single industry. When you're selling a process, you're selling something that doesn't yet exist, a possibility. You probably remember in the film, The Social Network, Justin Timberlake played Sean Parker, and he's talking to Mark Zuckerberg and his partner there, and he says, we don't even know what it is yet. We just know it's something cool. And so let's not take our chips down now. You know, let's, let's keep going. And so that's why you have a collaborative process to say, hey, I, I, I hear you, I know what you want, but let's talk some more and let's really engage here and see where we can go with this to, to create something that's better than you possibly had imagined.